Today I'm going to show you how to approximate a square root to the nearest hundredth without using a calculator. And the process starts exactly the same as it does when we are rounding a square root to the nearest whole number. I've got my radical 141 here. And I know that the square root, or the, I'm sorry, the perfect square that is bigger than 141 is 144. And I know that the perfect square that is smaller than 141 is 121. So because the square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of 144 is 12, I know that the square root of 141 falls somewhere in between 11 and 12. So in other words, and I'm going to kind of write this up here to the top, it's... 11 point something. Ooh, I don't know how I just managed to lasso right there. Whoops. 11 point something. Now I got to figure out what that point something is. That's why I'm looking right here for the hundredth. So how do I figure out that point something? I know it's going to be a fairly high decimal because 141 is pretty close to 144. So it's pretty close to 12 even though it's not quite all the way there. So I know it's going to be 11 point, a fairly high decimal. So how do I figure out exactly what that decimal is? Well, the first thing, and I'm going to erase this for the moment. First thing I want to figure out is if I, how many spaces are there in between 121 and 144? And that's really easy to do because we would just do 144 minus 121. And we would see that there are like 20, there's a distance of 23 in between 121 and 144. So if you're going to travel all the way from 121 up to radical 144, that is 23 spaces. Now I need to figure out exactly what the distance is from 121 to 144. So in other words, how much of the trip between 121 and 144 have I made? Obviously, I haven't gone this whole 23 steps because that would take me all the way to 144. So instead, I need to see how far away is 141 from 121. And that's really easy to see. 141 is 20 bigger than 121. So out of the total journey, or the total distance of 23, 141 is 20 out of 23 steps. So that means that as a fraction, it is traveled 20 out of 23 steps. So it's 20 to 20 thirds of the way there. Now, it sure would be easy if this question asked me for an estimate with a fraction, because then all I have to do is say it's 11 and 20 20 thirds. Unfortunately, it's asking me to the nearest hundredth, which implies that it wants a decimal. So I am going to have to take this 11 and 20 over 23 and turn it into a decimal. And I'm going to go to a blank page because I need a little bit more room. I personally do anyway. So I'm going to take that 11 and 20 over 23 from the previous page, and I'm going to turn that 20 over 23 into a decimal. So you might recall from, in case you watched the review video, to turn a, dec or a fraction into a decimal, you have to divide. So I'm going to divide 20 by 23. As you might recall, you need to see how many times 23 goes into 20. Of course, it won't go into it. So I'm going to add a decimal and add a zero. How many times does 23 go into 200? So I'm going to use my estimation skills because 23 is pretty darn close to 25. And I know that for every set of 100, 25 would go in there four times. So since I have 200, I've got a pretty good guess that 23 is going to go into 200 eight times. But I kind of like to guess and check here, so I'm just going to make sure... So yeah, if I do this eight times, that leaves me, that gives me 184. So 23 goes into 200 eight times. Eight times 23 is 184. I'm going to subtract the difference, and that is going to leave me with 16. Right now, if I shift my decimal straight up, line it up for my problem, I've got 
to the nearest, I've got to the tenth, and I need to get to the hundredth, so I've got to keep dividing. So I'm going to add another zero, bring it down so that now I'm trying to figure out how many times 23 goes into 160. Again, I'm using my estimation strategy. 23 is pretty close to 25, so I'm guessing that it's going to go into 160 six times. Yep, so times six. It'll give me 138, which will leave me with 22 left over. Now, a really common boo-boo is that some people would think I can stop right here because I have my tenths place, I have my hundredths place, but I really still need to do to one more decimal because I need to know whether my hundredths place is going to get rounded up to 0.87 or if it's going to stay at 0.86. And the only way to do that is to carry it out one more decimal place. So I'm going to add one more zero. 23 goes into 220 nine times, I believe. Let's see, 23 times 9, 7, 20. Yep, 207. And I might need to subtract and keep going, but I actually don't have to because I'm only rounding to the nearest hundredth. So I can now use that nine to see that I'm going to need to round that six up to a seven. So my decimal is 0.87. So I'm gonna replace this 20 over 23 with the decimal equivalent 0.87. So my estimation tells me that if I take the square root of 141, I'm gonna get about 11.87. Now let's see how close my estimate was, but doing it by hand. I'm gonna pull up my calculator here, and I'm gonna do the square root. Oh, first I gotta turn my calculator on, sorry. So second, square root, one, four, One. Sorry, my alignment's off. And, ta-da, 11.8743. So, yeah, my estimate, really, really super close. So, 11.87 is what this would be. And I actually got, and that's actually what I got. So, great. That is rounding to the nearest hundredth. Now, I'm going to give you another problem. What I would really like for you to do is pause the video and try the next one yourself. Estimating 154 to the nearest hundredth. I'd love for you to try it yourself, then restart the video when you're ready to check your answer to see whether or not you did it right. I'm gonna assume, however, that you have done this problem and that you've checked yourself and you are ready to check yourself with my answer. So here we go. First of all, I know that the perfect square that is bigger um, than 154 is 169. And the perfect square that is smaller than 154 is 144. So 154 is right here in between them. So the total distance from 144 to 169 is 25. I just get that by subtracting. And then the distance from 144 to 154 is 10. So the fraction is 10 out of 25. Now the cool thing about this fraction is it's really easy to turn into a decimal because all I have to do is, I don't even have to do that division. I can scale them up by four and that gives me 40 over 100, which means that my decimal is 40 hundredths or 0.4 for that matter and because the square root of 144 down here at the lower end is 12 I know that the whole number is 12 so it's going to be 12.40 in case you don't believe me let's check the estimate again with our calculator so I'm going to do second square root 1 5 
enter, and there we go. I got 12.4, which is very, very, uh, or 0 0.40. So now granted, mine would have rounded up right here on the calculator to 0 0.41. Um, but obviously, my estimate of 0 0.40 is still really close to 0 0.41.